Hello everyone, Shireen here. Um, you're back to watching my videos on motivation today, chapter 9, all right? And uh, motivation is part of the unit 2, which is people in organizations. Specifically in motivation, what we're going to cover today is motivation theories. And this will take place in a couple of videos broken into separate parts. Um, so yeah, let's uh, look at the first part in the next slide. So before we go into the theories of motivation, um, we want to do a bit of a recap, right? So what, what does motivation mean? Okay, so motivation is the reason or factors that pushes people to take actions that lead to achieving a particular goal. Okay, so a bit of an important recap here so that you understand why we're going to learn about theories, right? Because theories are important to help us understand, you know, what are those factors that push people to do things, right? Uh, and so you'll be looking at a couple of theories uh, in the next slide. And for today, we will be looking at two specific theories. Yeah, so let's check on the next portion. Now, let's look at all the famous people who have done research about motivation and the ones that we'll be covering in this video and a few of the other upcoming videos as well, all right? So we'll be looking at uh, Frederick Winslow Taylor, F.W. Taylor, Alton Mayo. We'll also be looking at the works of Maslow, Abraham Maslow, Frederick Herzberg, David McClellan, and Victor room right so as you can see it's quite a heavy chapter with six important people and what they have to say about motivation and for that purpose we will be breaking up these videos into um, short videos based on each uh, you know researcher and his work so for this video we're going to cover two people all right the first two Frederick Winslow Taylor or FW Taylor and the works of Alton Mayo Okay, so now let's talk about Frederick Winslow Taylor and from here on we'll call him Taylor, all right? And basically what Taylor has done is um, he has been called before, right, by businesses to come and analyze uh, factories, right, to determine the root cause of inefficiency, all right? Because when there is inefficiency, it affects productivity and the amount of work that people can do, all right? So what he was asked to do is to find out the root cause of uh, why, you know, people are not productive and not working as well as they should. And in order to determine that, what Taylor has done was come up with a few steps, right? And the first thing that he did was he select workers to perform a particular task, right? He observed them, right? Basically to see how they do a particular work and he also recorded the time they took to complete the task right the next thing he did was trying to identify a quicker way to do that similar type of job or work right and when he has identified that he decided to train them all right train them to use that new method on getting things done not only that he also supervised them all right monitor supervise be there with them to make sure that they follow the new methods without changing the way it's done and to follow within the time frame. Okay, and besides that, he also introduced to businesses back then to pay people based on how much they do. All right, and this was new, right? So not everyone gets the same amount of salary. He introduced this term called piece rate, okay, where you pay a worker based on how many units of products that they produce. Okay, so this is all with his idea of where, you know, a person should be paid fairly based on how much they contribute, right? So these are various steps that he has taken to identify a root cause of a problem. And because of this, he was known as the scientific father of scientific management because the way he has identified a particular problem was very detailed in terms of selecting, observing, recording the time they took, and then deciding to find out a better way all right, of doing certain things, train them, okay, supervise them, and also to ensure that they're really, really uh, motivated, which is looking at money, all right, he says that employees or people are motivated by money and therefore they should be paid based on how much they do. So if someone were, be, were to be paid for every unit that they produce, this would definitely motivate people to produce more, okay. So based on Taylor's work, there are certain elements that he has, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
done that has created uh, more relevance in today's business world okay and uh, some of them as what you see on the screen right now recruitment hiring people selecting the right people for the right job okay and also specialization training people so that they are uh, you know to to ensure that the right people is doing the right task okay grouping the right uh, skill set to be performing certain tasks that that makes productivity even better higher because people are skilled in a particular area right monitoring workers supervising workers that helps people to you know to know that they they could always refer to someone in case they need help right and to ensure that there's no mistakes or to minimize mistakes so monitoring supervising things like that right and also studying the way we do things all right instead of coming up with a solution almost immediately what taylor has done is go into the factory select people to do a certain task see how they do it observe them all right to improve all right to come up with better ways of doing certain tasks okay and also most importantly financial motivation pay systems okay basically piece rate paper output paying people for the work that they do okay so this is uh, the steps that taylor took to basically identify the you know methods or ways to increase motivation among workers right so that they will be able to do much more than they should and ultimately helping the business all right in the long run okay now let's look at uh, our second researcher elton mayo who came about with this discovery of the horton effect basically um his research looked at a plant in Horton, okay, where his initial work was to check on, it was to discover why there was very high labor turnover, and his assumption was based on working conditions, which is, was his initial uh, work, basically looking at light, heating, rest periods that could be the reason why workers were less productive and not happy, you know, and this affected how they delivered work, all right, and. Upon uh, rolling out his research, what he discovered next was not as what he had thought it would be. All right. So basically, he came up with four reasons why workers' productivity were affected or why their motivation were affected. Okay. He says that they were not consulted. All right. Consulting workers. They did not work in teams. All right. They were not empowered, and they were not given that ability or that that. Uh, uh, you know a decision to establish their own targets okay so as you can see um, the descriptions will be out now okay and I'm going to leave you some time because I would like you to match the correct interpretation of you know the the solutions that Mayo has given okay because the description is all jumbled up all right so basically to match the correct description to the correct solution okay I'll leave you some time for about maybe a minute or so and we'll check your answers in the next slide Okay, now let's check your answers. So according to Mayo, he says that people be more motivated if they were consulted frequently. So what he means by this is that when workers are consulted for ideas, workers feel more motivated. So management is suggested to, or managers or supervisors are encouraged to speak more to their workers to get more feedback, all right? And workers feel that when they are listened to or heard, they feel more happier and that helps them to work better. Okay, May also says that working in teams is important. Okay, basically working with others in a team increases productivity and team spirit because they are working together and there is, you know, a, a team that understands what needs to be done and to provide solutions and things like that. And that really, really encourages motivation. Okay, and worker empowerment. What he says is when workers are empowered to make decisions, 
concerning their work, this increases motivation. Now, what does this really mean? It doesn't mean that for major decisions like, you know, deciding what time to leave office today or leave the factory today, but basically to decide on when they feel is the right time for them to take their breaks. Okay, uh, of course, with still some supervision, but allowing them to decide that so that they have that uh, feel of empowerment they, where they can make a small decision. All right. And that makes them happy. He also says that workers will feel more motivated if they were able to establish targets for themselves, right? Specifically, when groups and teams are allowed to establish targets to achieve. So in teams or in groups, they can sit down, discuss and come up with what are their targets to achieve and propose to the management. This actually affects motivation. Okay, so as you can see, all of these um, uh, proposed solutions, right, um, has no connection with Mayo's initial work where working conditions are the reasons that affected their motivation, right? So these are all called non-financial motiva uh, motivators, right? Things that has nothing to do with money, but more with people engagement, collaboration, communication, all right? And empowerment given to workers. This helps with productivity. Okay, we have come to our slide where we summarize what uh, is a takeaway for from today's lessons. Okay, so you should be able to understand and able to explain the works of Taylor and Mayo and basically also be able to explain the main ideas from these theories. So exam questions uh, will be asking you to pull out the main ideas in your, in your essays and things like that. Uh, and rarely the case where you have to detail out each theory in detail because the outcome of such theories are more important for you to justify and to be applied in today's business setting. Okay. And we have come to the end of today's lesson. All right. I hope you're able to pick up a, a point or two. And as always, I remind all students to always refer to their notes, textbooks and whatnot to make sure that, uh, you know, you supplement whatever you can to the materials that you have so that you become better and better at what you do. Now, if you have any questions, I have my email address here on the slide. Drop me an email and I'll do my best to help you. Thank you and have a pleasant day ahead.